Hello ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to our section on origins. Uh, we are specifically talking about the different theories of creation and this is the fourth part that we have done. Okay, talking about lots of different theories, this will be the last in this series. Uh, we are going to start the discussion with intelligent design, which is both a new and an old idea. Um, it has gained popularity in recent times as evolutionists have become disillusioned about evolution, uh, but the actual idea was presented over a hundred years ago. So it's both a new and an old idea. Now the original argument was meant made by presenting the statement, if you were walking through a field and you found a watch, you would not look at the watch and assume that it grew there. You can look at it and you inherently know that somehow this watch was designed by a creator. And taking that analogy to the world and you look at all of the intricacies and the different amazing a number of details that you can learn about in science, and I know I know more than you because I'm a scientist, um, it's just the amount of detail and patterns is actually overwhelming, much more so than, say, a watch. Now, as a Christian, you think intelligent design. Of course, what that means is finally they're accepting the idea of God. However, uh, as a Christian, we would say the intelligent design is by God. However, not everyone agrees with that. There are people that are so set on being atheists and saying that there is no God that they are willing to go what I would consider a logical jump into the dark and they would actually say instead of God actually creating and designing this world as we see it that it was actually created by aliens okay uh, we'll get to some problems with that um, which you would think would take more faith I guess is up to your perception um, I personally have seen more evidence of God than of alien life. Uh, now, when we talk about that, we'll talk about it again in a minute. Um, there also is the idea of young earth creationism. Uh, this is a very conservative belief with a literal interpretation of Genesis 1 and it basically plans the idea of the earth that creation was a literal six days and then by looking at all of the family lines and the ages and things that are given to be able to determine that the earth is about six to ten thousand years old and depending on I guess different variations on how people come up with their calculations. Primarily people come up with an idea around 6,000. Um, but there, there's differences in calculations. I don't know what the, all the differences are. But the idea that the Earth is not millions and millions of years old, but that it's thousands of years old instead. Um, the young Earth creationism, like I said, believes in the literal six days that the first day of creation God spoke and there was light and dark uh, not a planet like you see but just light and dark um, 
second day that he separated out the oceans and the, the sky, separated them so you have different places. Third, that he created the land and the plants. Fourth, that he created all the celestial bodies like the stars, the planets. Uh, fifth day, birds and animals of the ocean. Sixth day, all of the animals including humanity, and on the seventh day, rested. Uh, we've talked before about the use of the word yom in Genesis and how it relates specifically to a 24-hour day. Um, and that is how it is used throughout the Old Testament. Uh, so it is believed by many that that it, since it means a literal 24-hour day, that it is a literal 24-hour day. Um, I'm going to let you listen to some videos. Uh, they actually are sections of one video. I have the link at the end. I'm also going to email it to you. Um, I didn't want to make you listen to the whole thing because the whole thing is about an hour long, as you can see by the the time indicator on the bar there. Um, however, it is a very interesting discussion, and if you have time to listen, I would strongly recommend it. Um, the speaker is Ken Ham. He is formerly a science teacher that was in a public school. He is currently able to discuss the realities of uh, creationism compared to science and this is from a conference when he was speaking with teenagers that was his main target audience um, so once the video cooperates we should be able to go once it cooperates. Come on, video. There we go. I want to show you a video clip of an interview with Dr. Richard Dawkins. Who's heard of Dr. Dawkins? Dr. Richard Dawkins. Oh, yeah, I think many of us heard of him. He wrote the book, The God Delusion. He's an atheist. He spends most of his life fighting against someone he doesn't even believe exists. A number of years ago, uh, we had someone who interviewed Dr. Dawkins to ask him this question. Dr. Dawkins, now he's an atheist, can you give an example, we only wanted one, where matter produces information and adds it into the genes. By the way, if evolution is true, it had to happen zillions of times. We just want one example, just one. I want you to see how he answered the question. Watch this. Professor Dawkins, can you give an example of a genetic mutation or an evolutionary process which can be seen to increase the information in the genome? There he is giving the right answer right now. Can you hear it? That is the right answer. There's no example. Now you might say, okay, okay, that was years ago. What does Dr. Dawkins say now? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that question too. How many of you have seen the movie called Expelled? Oh yeah, a lot of us have seen Expelled. I want to show you a video clip from that because here's Dr. Dawkins, uh, who many years after that video clip was asked the question, how did life arise on Earth? What do you think is the possibility that their uh, intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in uh, well, evolution? It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an intriguing possibility. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of... Do you know what he's talking about when he's talking about look at biochemistry and find a signature? He's talking about DNA. But you know what he's really acknowledging? DNA cries out there's an intelligence behind the universe. He doesn't believe in God, so it had to be some intelligence from outer space that brought life to Earth. Let's go on. Biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Wait a second. Richard Dawkins thought intelligent design might be a legitimate pursuit? Um, and that designer could well be 
higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. Well, but that higher intelligence would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. He couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point. So, Professor Dawkins was not against intelligent design, just certain types of designers, such as God. Well, there you have it. There's one of the leading atheists in the world giving you the evidence to support his faith that life evolved. It came to Earth from outer space. And think about that for a moment, by the way. Dr. Dawkins, how did life on Earth get here? Well, maybe some uh, civilization out there in outer space that it itself evolved had to bring life to Earth. So if you go back to that planet, wherever it is, and you said to him, well, how did life on this planet first come about? Well, I guess his answer would be, well, there was another planet out there somewhere where life evolved and they brought life to that planet that brought it to this planet. Well, okay, let's go back to that planet now. Now, well, how did life come about on that planet? Well, there must have been another planet somewhere out there and life evolved and he mocks at us for believing in an infinite creator God. Do you know what? It's the atheist that has a blind faith because the evidence does not confirm their faith. What we see in biochemistry confirms in the beginning God. Isn't it exciting being a Christian? It really is. Dr. Dawkins has a blind faith. As Christians, we don't have a blind faith. Students, don't get the idea that Christians have a blind faith. How's not a blind faith? Because if the Bible really is a revelation from God, and he's given us the true history here and where things came from and what life is all about, it'll make sense of the world. And it does. And science, true observational science, will confirm the Bible's history. And it does, over and over again. Okay. And, um, I want to show you to the next video. This is an excerpt from the same series. There's a video um, discussing six, six literal so days. Do you really believe that God created in six literal days? Even many Christians say, couldn't those days be millions of years? And uh, my answer is, no, those days of creation could not be millions of years. And I'll tell you why. The reason is because, you know, any word has two or more meanings dependent upon context, right? It's context that determines meaning. For instance, the word day in English, if, if I said to you back in my father's day, that would be back in my father's time. If I said uh, you work during the day, you would understand that as a daylight portion of a day. If I said to you, we're here for three days, you would understand that as three 24-hour days. You know, the Hebrew word for day has similar meanings. The Hebrew word for day can mean an ordinary day, the daylight portion of a day it can mean time for instance in the bible uh, when we read uh, in the day of the lord in the time of the judges that's the hebrew word for day there it means time but you know there are rules of hebrew that tell us when the hebrew word the word yom means an ordinary day for instance uh, if we look outside of Genesis chapter 1, if we don't use Genesis chapter 1, whenever the word day is used with a number 410 times, actually, it always means an ordinary day. Whenever we have the phrase evening and morning in the same passage, 38 times outside of Genesis 1, it always means an ordinary day. And whenever we have the words evening or morning individually with the word day, 23 times each outside of Genesis 1, then they always mean an ordinary day. And whenever the word night is used with the word day, outside of Genesis 1 52 times it always means an ordinary day now let's look at the first day of creation you've got night evening morning number and day boy that gives me a strong hint doesn't it let's look at the next one evening morning number day 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 people it's so obvious from the Bible that the word day in Genesis 1 means an ordinary day in fact think about this for a moment where do we get the idea of our week from? We know where the day comes from, the rotation of the earth, the measurement of the day, the month, the earth, and the moon, the year, the earth, and the sun. Where does the seven-day week come from? It comes from the Bible. That's where it comes from. It comes from the Bible. Now, some people say to me, yeah, but I read in the Bible that a day is like a thousand years. Who's heard someone say that to you? A day is like a thousand years. I tell people, oh, you mean that passage in 2 Peter chapter 3? Yeah, read the rest of the verse, and it says a thousand years are like a day. That just cancels that one right out, doesn't it? And not only that, it, the Bible doesn't say a day is like a thousand years. I want you to notice something. It says one day is, what's the next three words? With the Lord, a thousand years or a thousand years uh, as one day. Do you know what it's telling us? God is outside of time. To God, a day is like a thousand years or a thousand years like a day because God is not limited by natural processes and time as we are. 
In fact, in the very first verse of the Bible, it says, in the beginning, that's time, God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. God created time for this creation to exist. He's outside of time. To him, a day is like a thousand years. That's not defining a Hebrew word. You can't use a phrase in the New Testament anyway to define the meaning of a Hebrew word. A Hebrew word depends upon the Hebrew language. No, it's very obvious from Scripture that the days of creation are ordinary days. I know there are many Christians that say that they could be millions of years or whatever, but the reason they say that ultimately is because they're taking what the secular scientists say about millions of years and trying to fit it into the Bible. And so, because of that, I'm often asked another question. Well, can Christians believe in millions of years? Now, if you believe in millions of years and, and you're a Christian, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that therefore you can't be a Christian, but I'm going to say you're inconsistent. And let me show you why. We read in Genesis chapter 1 that originally God told Adam and Eve to eat fruit. The animals were to eat plants. Uh, we weren't told that we could eat meat until after the flood. You see, originally, we are all created to be vegetarian. Uh, remember what happened in Genesis. Adam, if you eat of this one tree as a test of obedience, you will surely what? Die. It was Adam's sin that brought death. The Bible makes it very clear that death came into the world because of sin. Now, if you believe in millions of years, and you believe the layers of fossils are laid down over millions of years, and you've got all these layers of fossils with all these dead things in them, uh, then that doesn't fit with what the Bible says, that originally all the animals were vegetarian. In the fossil record, you find evidence of diseases in the bones of creatures like dinosaurs, but when God made everything, he said it was very good. In the fossil record, you find fossils of thorns that secular scientists say are hundreds of millions of years before man, but the Bible says thorns only came into the world after man sinned. Paul tells us in Romans 8 that the whole of creation groans because of sin. You see, the Bible makes it clear, death, disease, thorns, that all had to happen after sin. But if you believe in millions of years as a Christian, you've got a problem because you've got all that before man. Millions of years before man, it doesn't fit. So you can't be consistent as a Christian and believe in millions of years and what the Bible tells us. So then, the next question that people ask is, okay, well then, what about the age of the earth? Isn't there evidence for, for millions of years? And how do we understand all that? Well, first of all, let's look at what the Bible says. If you take the days of creation as ordinary days, and you take all those genealogies in Scripture, if you add it all up, five days before Adam, from Adam to Abraham, and then you add up from Abraham until today, you get about 6,000 years. Now, if the Bible said the earth is 6,000 years old, there'd be a problem, because it was completed 2,000 years ago. So you see, the Bible doesn't say, here's how old the earth is. You know what the Bible gives us? A history. And it tells us about the days of creation, and when people lived and died and so on, and gives us that history so we can add up the dates, and that's how we get the few thousand years. I believe that Jesus made it very clear the earth can't be billions of years old. For instance, in Mark chapter 10 and verse 6, Jesus said, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Now, if the beginning was billions of years before he made male and female, that doesn't make any sense. But if the beginning was just a few days before he made male and female, that makes a lot of sense. Then... Okay. Um, well, like I've said, the, the uh, videos were from a single video on Lulon. This is the uh, web link. If you want to use it, I will also email it to you so that if you want to watch the whole thing, you are quite welcome to. It is definitely worth the watching.